All right, I'll get started. Hello guys, this is Sean from Korea. And as of today, I'm going to make a video in Korean for Monday and Wednesday and do the overall uh, review of those two videos in English in Friday. So hopefully those people who only speak English could uh, go over my stuff on Friday. So I have two big news for today. So the first one is about the cryptocurrency and quantum computing. So there was a release of quantum resistance wallet. So uh, last month, a company called Polygroup launched its first quantum resistance smart contract anchor wallet for Ethereum blockchain technology. The Polygroup is a company very small within 10 people and it's a technology platform company based on blockchain technology that protects digital assets from quantum computing threats. So this wallet can resist near future quantum computing attacks and the public believes that the quantum computers will be a threat to future blockchain uh, and will be able to hack the blockchain at least on 2031. And the CEO, Pure, he is a founder and CEO of the Poly Group and he told us that the each key can only be used once but this is a necessary trade-off to uh, all major blockchains to be protected by the quantum computer attacks. So I did some research on the CEO of the group and his picture is here and he's actually, he did a postdoctoral research on Harvard University on uh, designing quantum simulation algorithms and he has actually worked in the field of quantum computing almost uh, four years sorry for the Korean and he worked in one of the major companies Asanadu which is developing a photonic quantum computer and he also worked in Zapata computing which is developing a quantum software and algorithms and platforms so he knows what the quantum computing is and how the quantum computing is getting developed because he has experience in the major quantum computing companies and then he moved out and uh, founded the poly group to protect the digital assets from the quantum computing attacks so by looking at this i feel like that he knows the quantum computing and he feels that quantum computing will be a threat to blockchain pretty soon which means not only to the blockchain but also to all the current uh, cryptography or the security system that we're using right now. So I think this is one of the big news that we should know. And second news is that I'm not sure if you could realize who this is, but this is uh, Dr. Grover. And he's a very famous pe person in the quantum computing field because he developed the algorithm called Grover algorithm. So this is a quantum algorithm used for data retrieval. So it, And it is one, uh, one of the few core quantum algorithms that actually it's proven to be better than the classical computer. So it's used to quickly find specific desired data from an unorganized or unstructured database. So on January 9th, a company called Quantum Blockchain Technologies hired him as a special consultant to solve quantum mining algorithms. So very interesting words. So Dr. Gruber, uh, for his background, he worked at AT&T Bell Research Lab, which is one of the best private labs in the world. And he invented the first quantum algorithm and a pioneer in a, uh, he, and is a pioneer in quantum computing research and development. So he's very famous for the one of the best people in the quantum computing field. And his algorithm utilizes quantum computing to improve the speed, accuracy, and significantly improve usability of the quantum algorithms. So his algorithm, the Grover algorithm, is fundamentally related to the complex test of Bitcoin mining. So very interesting, right? So Dr. Grover signed a three month contract with the company. I'll just call it as a QBT and was awarded with 5 million warrants. I'm not sure how much that is worth, but it must be pretty big money. And that is accessible on October 31st. So the CEO said he's very excited to have Dr. Grover and their proprietary uh, SHA-256 quantum version algorithm is developed by QBT. I think this is the quantum mining algorithm. And Dr. Groover is to validate or verify, verify the SHA-256 quantum version algorithm. And that is the key to the success of their project. So he is doing the critical role for the company. And the QBT developed the quantum mining algorithm over the last 12 months and is now moving into the patent application phase so before uh, going to file a patent he they uh, hired dr grover to do the final theoretical verification of qbt's algorithm and also for the core engine verification for bitcoin mining so if this becomes possible it'll be a big threat to all the cryptocurrencies i think 
So we'll have to monitor what happens. And those who doesn't know what SHA-256 is, it is one of the encryption algorithms announced by the NIST in the United States and currently a most used encryption method in blockchain. So after announcing this news, this company is actually listed on the London exchange and it went up like crazy. So it started like a dollar and 30 or I think it's in the British pounds, but let's just say it's a dollar, dollar and 30 and it almost became to 220. So almost the stock price have gotten up like two times. So and the volume was crazy as well so i guess people perceive this as uh, one of the big major news so we'll have to uh, monitor what really happens so for my thought cryptocurrency threats from quantum computers may be closer than we think according to the ibm ceo he said that around 2030 there will be a threat of hacking from quantum computing and he said that we don't have to worry because we have enough time so we just need to prepare from now so most uh, people working in quantum industry says uh, the useful or the threat of quantum computing will be uh, happening around 2030. So that'll be one of our milestone years. And I think it's really re meaningful that a person who worked as a quantum physicist in major quantum uh, companies have came up with a technology with quantum tolerance. So but i'm not sure how reliable the qbt is it's a pretty small country with a uh, history of changing its company's name a few times but it seems meaningful to hire the master of quantum dr grover to verify their bitcoin mining algorithm so they look very confident and after applying for a quantum mining algorithm patent uh, the ceo said that he's currently monitoring several quantum computer companies to apply the technology on so they're looking for a good hardware company, and I hope this becomes IonQ. I'm not sure which company will take it, but I saw from the article that they were using D-Wave's quantum annealer to do the testing, so it might be D-Wave, IonQ, who knows. Moving on to next theme is about the IonQ. So IonQ attended a Needham growth conference. So on Ju January 11th, IonQ CFO Thomas Kramer and head of IR Jordan Shafiro attended Needham Growth Conference hosted by Needham and Company. So there are a few questions and the answers and I just abstracted a uh, core or more important contents. So let's go over it. So the first question was what technologies are there for the quantum computers? So the Thomas answers photonics, superconductors and ion traps are major or the mainstream technologies currently. Photonics has the disadvantage of having not having memory and it's difficult to implement the entanglement which is one of the uh, major technology or the phenomenon of the quantum. And for superconductors, uh, IBM, Google and Rigetti is using this method. Are quantum computers implemented to putting qubits in semiconductor technology, which we have using it over 60 years, but it has very short qubit life cycle, or we could say qubit coherence time. And then there's ion trap, which IonQ is very good at, and they purchase atoms such as ytterbium and barium from national laboratories. So they're saying they have a secure supply chain and extracts one electron from the atom to create an ion and use it. But uh, for the ion trap, they use um, qubit from the nature so they don't have to manufacture anything. So qubits are identical to each other and perfect. So it means high quality qubits. So very stable and has much longer qubit coherence time than superconductors. So they said it like superconductors requires a reboot in much less than a second, but ion is QC can be used more than weeks. So that's a good analogy that he used and with much higher fidelity. So anyone want to use the technology that has been used for 60 years, like the semiconductor industry, but IonQ choose to use the Ion Trap because their core top uh, um, scientists, uh, Chris Monroe and Jung Sung Kim, they have more than 25 years of research of Ion Trap. So other companies want to uh, do the Ion Trap, but they don't have technology or personnel to implement those technologies. So the next question is one of the disadvantages of Ion Trap is scalability. So how is IonQ going to solve that? So the answer was uh, quite out of expectation. So the Thomas said, how do you define scalability? So IonQ uses a metric called algorithmic qubits, uh, in short AQ, and it's 
it's their basis of the technology and it's working to increase it. And a cube is a concept similar to logical qubit. Logical qubit is a perfect qubit that you can use without error, but refers to a qubit capable of commu computation. So it gives a reliable uh, result. Not perfect, but reliable. So if a particular manufacturer, such as IBM, has a large number of qubits, do you think uh, how many of them can be used for calculations? Not many of them. So QEDC did a research on the, uh, they ran uh, various algorithms in quantum computers from several companies, and IonQ came out the best results, even two times. And IonQ is focusing on adding more useful qubits, so they tried to uh, bring more uh, AQ, and if one more AQ, it means double of performance. So Thomas said that in the stage of 70 logical qubits, it, the quantum computer will be comparable to the current best computers. So IonQ is currently with 25 and is targeting to get to 29 algorithm qubits this year. And 25 to 20Q is 2 to the fourth power. So it means 16 times better performance increase. So it makes no sense to discuss millions of qubits. So it doesn't make sense. The reason why we hear this million of qubits is the error rate for the superconducting method is very high and they need very big overhead to make uh, good qubits. So for example, the superconducting method requires 1000 physical qubits to make one logical qubit. But compared to that, IonQ has already demonstrated using only 16 physical qubits to make one logical qubit. So you just you can't just uh, compare the quantum computer with only with the physical qubits. You have to know how many of the physical qubits are actually usable. So the next question, what are the main specifications of IonQ's quantum computers? And what about the newest model, Forte? And the one with the 11 qubit, Harmony, launched on AWS on 2020, and it only had 6 AQ. And at the time, competitors only had 2 AQ. So 4 AQ differences, which means 2 to the 4th power, 16 times better than others. And recently, Harmony's AQ increased from 6 to 9, and the major model that they are using right now, Area, was launched in 2022 and initially had 20 AQ and got better to 23, and in the fourth quarter of last year, became 25. So they achieved their technical roadmap, and they claim it is the currently the most powerful quantum computer. So what matters to the customer is how good or how sophisticated the machine is or how good parts they used, but they know to, they want to know what can be done with the quantum computer. So IonQ is focusing on AQ, not on the physical qubits. So increasing the number of computable qubits, useful qubits, exponentially more calculations, increasing its usefulness. So ARIA has 32 physical qubits and it currently has 25 AQ. And the next generation quantum computer, Forte, which uh, the specific uh, specifications have not, be, not been revealed, but uh, Thomas uh, gave a hint. He said that 40 physical qubits will be there and plan to use 32 qubits and to make 29 AQs, which is the uh, goal for this year. And for the longer term AQ roadmap, IonQ puts more qubits into each single chip. That is the first stage. And after that, connecting multiple chips into a network using a technology called photonic interconnects. We'll be talking about that later. And so that's their goal. And IonQ recently acquired Entangled Network. I'll just call it as EN. And the host asked, why did you acquire it? So EN is a company that optimizes algorithms that run on quantum computers. So they'll provide architecture expertise, software expertise and help IonQ make scalability more efficient. So networking will be implanted by IonQ itself, but EN will play a role in helping it better in architecture-wise and software-wise. And for the EN's team size and purchase price, uh, the Tom uh, Thomas didn't actually talk about it. He just said that it's uh, acquiring EN was just like hiring someone to help IonQ. And IonQ also announced the establishment of IonQ branch in Canada. And I remember from uh, Professor Monroe's other interviews, he said that they will have more branches in different locations. And I think this is one of uh, what he said. And host also asked about how actively our professors are working, Chris Monroe and Jung Sang Kim. 
I think it's uh, related to the Scorpion uh, Capital. They recently has published a short report about IMQ and claim that the professors are not really working for the IMQ. So, so Thomas said that both professors are only accepting PhD students, so they have more time to focus on IMQ and is focusing on IMQ. And Professor Kim is probably the busiest person at IMQ, and Professor Monroe is also working very hard. So Professor Monroe is taking a longer-term visionary role, whereas the Professor Jung Sun Kim uh, has more short-term perspective. So he does everyday operations, and Professor Monroe gives longer-term uh, goals and activities. So on the revenue side, uh, there are four pipelines for IonQ. First one is using the public cloud. So they launched their quantum computer on public cloud. So anyone who wants to use IonQ's QC can access to one of those platforms and pay for it. And the next one, uh, but when using public cloud, you will be in queue, so you have to wait. And those who doesn't want to wait can have a direct contract and use IonQ's private cloud. That's the second pipeline. And third, IonQ will provide quantum computing professional services. And with the customer, IonQ will develop collaborative algorithm for the customer's problem. So that will be the third. And the last one will be purchase of real quantum computers. And IonQ was expecting it would take about five years after they got listed. But right after listing, many people or many organizations were interested in buying the actual quantum computer. So this is very meaningful and it will be happening in one or one and a half year later. So maybe sometime during year 2024. And uh, many of IonQ core personnel said that this will generate nine figure revenue, which is very big number. So this might accelerate the revenue of IonQ. And they've also uh, announced that they're setting up a manufacturing line in Seattle and they signed the lease agreement last quarter and is setting up the line. So that was one of the big news. And although IonQ's number are, numbers are small, they're continuing to exceed bookings expectations largely. So we'll have to monitor their earnings as well. And Airbus, Hyundai, uh, Air Force Research Institute, UMD, and they have all those kinds of various customers. And Thomas also said that early technologies receive a lot of government subsidies, but IonQ did not receive any government subsidies, but rather generating sales from academics and government agencies. So they are doing better than what they expected. And the classical computers, they were also once humble and initially was sold to research institutions, but moved on to eventually got sold by uh, companies and started to make sales and quantum computers will do the same. We'll go over the same stages. So, And when we look at the technological uh, roadmap of IonQ, so we are here with 25 AQ. So for this year, so for this year we'll get to 29. And next year, 35 and on 2025, we'll get to 64 AQ. And this is when quantum computing will make difference. So it'll have an initial quantum advantage which is getting doing better than the current best supercomputers and if you look at the uh, small number two it says it will implement error correction so from 2025 the one of the biggest challenge is to correct the errors in quantum computing because the quantum computer in inherently has big error rate so they will implement the error correction and so the year 2025 will be a turning point for IonQ. So we'll have to monitor uh, if that really becomes reality. And if you see, if you notice from 2027 and 2028, they have number small number three and the three has 32 to one error correction. So the reason why the uh, overhead increases is, uh, as far as I know, is implementing a better error correction method. So that's why it's using more physical qubits to make the uh, logical qubit. For this news, what I think is that IonQ is focusing on practicality instead of just telling us about the physical qubits like other competitors. So the number of qubits that can be used for calculation is important, not just the number of qubits which re represents physical qubits. So when we get to 70 logical qubits, I'm not sure if that's same as uh, algorithm qubits, but I definitely know that logical qubits is a much more um, perfect qubit than the AQ. So I just think when we get to 60 or 70 AQ, we'll see um, good performance that is comparable to the best computers. So I expect something will happen in 2025. And IonQ's next generation model, Forte, 
will implement 29AQ this year. That's IonQ's goal. And the acquisition of Entangled Network will help better networking between qubit chips. So IonQ is struggling to uh, apply the photonic interconnect, which is connecting the single chips to make it like uh, one giant uh, quantum computer. So EN will help them to implement this technology. And IonQ also established IonQ Canada branch, and professors are working hard. And physical sales of quantum computers will happen in 12 to 8 months. So, and also about the uh, manufacturing line in Seattle, they announced that they already signed the lease and is doing the setup, and IonQ continues to exceed bookings. Alright, so today I talked about cryptocurrency and quantum computing, and IonQ CFO's interview. The, the important hints from the interview. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video and I hope my video was informative and um, is a big help to you guys. Alright, so thank you for listening. Please uh, leave a like, comment, and please subscribe to my channel. So, Alright, thank you.